Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about Columbia 5, Panama Nil, and wow, what a beatdown. This was a huge win for Columbia. Now, I know people go in the ch comments below and say to me, Arpon, it's just Panama. We expected Columbia to win. And I understand. I get that notion. I understand that. And I know it's Panama. But still, to beat Panama 5-0 is still crazy. Because even when Uruguay played against them, they only won 3-1. Uruguay looked didn't look that great against Panama, especially in the second half. This game, however, Colombia just absolutely demolished Panama. Panama only had maybe a few moments in the first half where they could have scored. But other than that, Panama were just not there for the taking, you know. First goal for, came from Cordoba. Hamas gets the assist, man. Hamas, man, he's such a good player for Uruguay. Then the second goal came from the stupid mistake there from Mosquera. Then Hamas Rodriguez steps up, scores a penalty. And then Luis Diaz, he scores an absolute banger of a goal to make it 3-0. And then the fourth goal was scored by Richard Rios. Fantastic goal there. And then obviously the fifth goal was uh, a stupid mistake there from Cordoba. And up step, the guy from the bench, Miguel Borja, to score to make it 5-0. What I really like about this Colombia team is that they're so well organized as the attack. Hamas is cooking. Cordoba has been amazing. Luis Diaz. And I think for Colombia, what I really like from them is the attacking options they have. They have three players that are good to bring. You know, you even have Sinister that could come off the bench and make an impact. Even Borja as well. Even if I don't really rate Borja that highly, I still think he could be off the bench. Guy that could still make an impact. John Cantero as well. Right. And I think Colombia have those kind of difference makers. And I think for Colombia, what's very refreshing to see is that Jeremy Mina has been benched because Jeremy Mina has finished. I'm sorry. Jeremy Mina is just not that good guy. So I think for Colombia, as I said, man, they have a lot of options attack. They're very good with set pieces. They can score bangers. They can score penalties. Colombia is just a complete package. Just a complete package. Panama, for me, I think they did. The, they You have to give credit to Thomas Christensen. Panama getting to the quarterfinals is already a step above what they were expecting. Because let's be real, many of us expected Panama to probably be out in the group stage. The fact that Panama defeated the host nation United States in the United States is a commendable achievement. And I just think for Panama, as I said, man, they, they did one step better than they did in 2016. They made it to the quarterfinals. 2016, they just went out of the group stage. And yeah, so shout out to Panama. They made it to the quarterfinals. It's a great achievement for them. And I think the, the for Panama, I think the big takeaway is that this team is just good against CONCACAF teams. When they play against non concacaf teams, they're just not it. You know, and obviously, I do think Panama did miss Carskilia. Obviously, he was a big suspension. But ultimately, I just feel like uh, Colombia were just too good. Colombia were too good. And I think for Colombia, they're just fantastic. And I'm really intrigued to see their matchup against Uruguay, which actually segues very nicely to this game. Uruguay nil, Brazil nil. This was a terrible game. Let me just start by saying this right now. This was one of the worst games I watched of the Copa America this year. Because when I was watching this game, I was thinking to myself, oh my jeez, the amount of fouls was insane. Like, this game has so many fouls. In fact, let me actually show you guys the stats here in particular. The amount of fouls was committed in this game. 26 fouls by Uruguay and 15 fouls by Brazil. Guys, this game was about fouls. The, the, like, there was hardly much action in the first half. The first half, you literally only had five shots on five shots for, for Uruguay. Now, I actually think Brazil actually were the better team on the day. Rafinha actually had a good effort there just before halftime from a good set piece. And then obviously had that effort there. But yeah, for Brazil, as I said, man, it's just it was just so bad that first half. That first half was really, really particularly bad. Both teams didn't really offer anything attacking wise. And Andrik just kept getting manhandled. Every time Andrik was on the every time it, it felt like every time Andrik was on the ball. An Uruguay player was trying to tackle him. It was just so crazy to watch. I was like, what the heck is going on? The second half got interesting, though. Second half was pretty much more or less the same until the red card came. And I think the red card did change the game because, for me, it was definitely a red. I don't know what Nandes is doing on, um, I think it was uh, Rodrigo. And it was such a terrible foul. It was such a blistering foul. And it had to be a red. It had to be a red. And Uruguay go down a man. And Brazil were desperate to get the goal. But you could tell that even with Brazil, uh, even with Uruguay man down, Brazil still didn't look great. Brazil couldn't even, only got one shot on target in that second half, which was crazy to me. Uruguay, 
actually create a lot of good chance. Cascaris there had that block. Nunes had that block there. Um, and yeah, then Araujo missed there. Uh, Ronald Araujo did get into the first half, which was a big blow. Ronald Araujo is just so... Guys, is he injury prone? He might be injury prone, guys. He might be injury prone. Araujo there, an effort there. And yeah, Valverde. Valverde, Valverde, guys. The game was just not great. Goes to penalties. And you have to blame Dorival Jr. for this one. Dorival Jr., why are you letting Eder Militao take the first penalty? It just doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense. His penalty got saved. Pereira takes the next penalty. Good penalty there. Uh, the Douglas Luiz, man. Douglas Luiz, why are you letting Douglas... Okay, Douglas Luiz, to be fair, is a good pen taker. So I could understand that one. And to be fair, he did hit the post. Uh, that one, so it's a bit of an egregious one. And then obviously Jose Maria Jimenez he missed his pen. Uh, but it was a great save from Allison. But yeah, Uruguay prevail on pens. They were pretty good penalties, and Allison wasn't really close to making the saves. And maybe Uruguay, maybe Brazil should have brought Bento, because Bento was actually a really good shot stopper from penalties. Maybe they should have brought him on. But I knew that um, Dorival Jr. was going to do that. And the thing about Dorival Jr. is that he made the sub so late. When you're down a man, you have to make more. You have to be more proactive. You know, Andres Pereira and Douglas Oisabio, Evan Nilsson, Gabriel Martinelli. Those guys just came up for penalties. They just came up for pens. And that's the problem for Brazil is that when they should have made those substitutions when Uruguay got the red card. Uruguay got the red card, I think it was the the 74th minute. Why did it take seven minutes following the red card for you to make the changes? It just doesn't make sense to me. Brazil were awful in this tournament. Their attack was so lackluster. And I just think for Uruguay, man, defensively, they look pretty good. I think they're able to keep their shape even going down a man. They're able to keep their composure be resolute uh, solidified because brazil was there brazil was pampering man brazil wanted to get that goal and you have to give credit to uruguay that they managed to help hold on even down a man but i also think it just shows how bad brazil's attack is it just shows how bad brazil's attack is and for uruguay in particular man i was just not impressed with uruguay they just looked very un un uninspiring uh their midfield was good defense was good but that attack was so lackluster if, in my opinion, the better team in the game was probably Brazil. I actually think Brazil was actually the better team overall. But I just think that Uruguay just, they had it in them. Uruguay were just controlled, controlling the game. And I think Brazil, Uruguay was just more, they were more compact, you know. And, you know, came down to pens and pens is a lottery. And for Brazil, as I said, man, this is a, this is bad. And now the quarterfinal exit on pens, just like the World Cup 2022. And for Uruguay, guys, I have a crazy stat for Uruguay, guys. This is the first time. Uruguay has made a Copa America semifinals since 2011, guys. I know it sounds crazy, but it's actually true. It is actually true. You guys can fact check it. And yeah, so shout out to Uruguay. They make it to the semifinals of the Copa America. And now they're playing against Colombia. And I'll be honest with you guys, Uruguay is going to have to look a lot better. Because this game, they were very much underwhelming. So as I said, man, congrats to Uruguay for making it through, man. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video reaction, guys. Please let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. I'm sure there probably is some big major talking points, guys. And as I said, man, I hope you guys did enjoy. And I'll see you guys later. And oh, one thing I forgot to mention, guys. I forgot to mention. Why is Joe Gomez still starting? It just doesn't make sense to me. All right. I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.